بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful سبحان الله الحمد لله ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر سبحان الله الحمد لله ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر سبحان الله الحمد لله ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر سبحان الله الحمد لله ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless him and to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness Beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, we are in the month of Ramadan, this being the second Jumu'ah in this blessed month of Ramadan. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us from His mercy, to accept the fasts that we have engaged in, to make easy for us the fasts to the end of the month, inshaAllah, to accept from us what we have been engaged in in terms of taraweeh in the evenings and all the other sacrifices the recitation of the quran and may he grant us increase in all this and may he accept it from us Amen. if we are to study the quran we will find that there are different surahs in the quran and all these surahs have so much in them in terms of meaning rich in meaning And it is our duty to try our best to understand the Qur'an. And it is our duty to try our best to put whatever we've learnt into practice and to convey it to others. So one is the recitation, two is the understanding, three is the putting into practice, and four is the conveying to others. One of these surahs that I'd like to speak about today is Surah Al-Kahf. Al-Kahf named after the cave and the people of the cave. As Muslims, we should all be knowing this surah very well. It plays on our radio stations and airwaves every Friday. And we have many of us who read this surah on a regular basis, more so weekly basis, especially on a Friday. In a narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks of how Surah Al-Kahf, the one who reads it on a Friday, would find his entire week enlightened up to the next Friday. So that is a narration. Another narration that is reported in Ad-Darimi, Sunan Ad-Darimi, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, that the one who reads Surah Al-Kahf, and here reading does not just mean to recite it, to read it, to understand it, to know what it's all about, to believe in it, to have firm conviction, and so on, will be protected from the trials of the Dajjal. What is the connection of Dajjal and Surah Al-Kahf? Inshallah, this afternoon I will try to explain this connection because it is extremely interesting, very interesting. Firstly, when Dajjal comes, we will be tested in four ways. He will try to take our religion away from us, so that is the test of religion. By claiming that he is the God and you, we need to accept him as the deity, that is the trial of Dajjal. And Dajjal refers to two things. One is what we know is the Dajjal. But then there is what is known as the fitna of Dajjal. Anything, anything at any time that is connected to any one of the tests that we have been taught Dajjal will bring forth is also part and parcel of his force. It might not be him in person, but it's part of his force and part of the tests. 
So anyone trying to take your religion away from you is a Dajjal. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, they will come to my ummah. Dajjaluna kathabuna qariban min thalathin. Kulluhum yaz'amu annahu nabiyun wa ana khatamun nabiyyina la nabiyya ba'di. There will be so many Dajjals who come. A Dajjal is a liar. And a Dajjal, the plural of which is Dajjajila, used in the Arabic language, those who want to take your religion away from you. The Prophet ﷺ says, there will come people who will claim to be prophets. You should know that I am the final prophet. One narration says, 30 odd people will come. So, when the real Dajjal comes, the ultimate, the final, the sign of Qiyamah, that Dajjal comes, he will also want to take our religion from us. At that time, there will be famine. There will be drought. And he will say, I will give you. you all you got to do is say that I am the God. And, and you will not die of hunger. More like the economies of the globe, all depending on one major economy that tells you, if you accept us as the gods of the world, there will be no sanctions against you. And we will deal properly with you. And we will make sure that your economy boosts and goes up. And then they come and tell you, if you do anything that we don't like, we will impose sanctions on you and you will die of hunger. Doesn't it ring a bell? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us security. Amen. So these are the forces of the devil that want to impose their own ideas and thoughts and beliefs on everyone else. They want to take the religion away from people. So it's important for us to be protected in that sense. We all need to cling, cling to the deen. Allah says in the Quran, Hold fast upon the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be disunited. May Allah grant us unity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to hold fast on this rope. The rope here referring to the Quran and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, the first test we made mention of that the Dajjal will be coming with is the test of religion. He will want us to disbelieve in Allah and believe in Him. And the hadith says, for anyone who has believed in Allah, as soon as they look at him, they will see on his forehead the letters Ka, Fa, and Ra, depicting that this one is actually a kafir. The second test the Jal will come about with, we touched on it just now, the test of wealth, where people will be poor, people will be suffering, there will be famine, there will be drought, but he will have control over what? He will have control over the water on the globe. And he will have control over irrigation. So you believe I'm a God, I make you rich. I will allow water to get to your land. When it gets to your land, you will be able to irrigate. And then the produce will grow. So you believe in me as a God and you have produce. So that is a test of wealth. The third test he will come with is the test of knowledge. Test of knowledge in that what is right will be considered wrong and it will be believed. Secondly, those who are upright and knowledgeable will be considered ignorant and those who are ignorant will be considered the most knowledgeable. To the degree that all those with knowledge will be fought and eradicated until there will be nobody with knowledge left on the earth except those who are ignorant considered to be extremely knowledgeable and people will follow them that is also in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how knowledge will be taken away it will be taken away by the death of the scholars and when the scholars have gone people will start considering those who have no knowledge as knowledgeable and when that happens and these people start issuing rulings, they will be misguided and they will misguide others. And the helm, the height of it will be when the Dajjal comes, 
what is wrong will be believed as being correct. Take a look at the power of the media today. The media has the capacity and already has worked in that direction of making us hate our brothers in the Middle East solely because we believe they're crooks and we believe they're this. And yet we don't realize the source of the story is someone who's just playing with our minds. Firstly, when the Quran says, if a believer who is sinful comes to you with news of someone else, make sure you authenticate it firsthand before you believe it. Otherwise, you may believe something that will result in regret for yourself and you may accuse people of what they're not guilty of. What if someone who's not a Muslim comes to you? Someone who's an enemy. We're not talking of ordinary non-Muslims who sometimes might be more truthful than some Muslims. May Allah safeguard us and grant us truthfulness. But we're talking of people who are known as outright enemies of Islam. They are out there to get you. We believe their television stations. We believe their news. We believe their newspapers against our own brothers. So we are lost. And you find in the Muslim Ummah, if we are to ask any Muslim... Who are the worst leaders in the world? They'll recite the names of 20 Muslim leaders and that's it. There we are. May Allah protect us. Wallahi, there are, at times we don't know what's going on and our information is from Dajjal. Our information is from forces similar to that of Dajjal. So there will be a test when the Dajjal comes, a test of what? Knowledge. He will take it away from us and he will make us believe that what we have is knowledge when it is not. We need to be worried. And the last test that is made mention of, the test of power, where people would love to be powerful and they want to have authority. So in order to gain a little bit of power, they begin to worship the devil because the Jal will instruct them to do that. Today you have the Satanists, you have the Freemasons. What do they do? Wallahi, they worship Iblis himself personally. And what does he do for them in return? He makes them feel the power. They feel it. And he can toss and turn people who are standing in front of them just because they have sacrificed for him. So he gives them a power. And they become powerful, solid people, strong. They can control your mind because there is the life of the unseen that they have sacrificed for. So they will murder people and spill blood in order to appease the devil so that they can become people who can control most of the singers 99% of the pop stars that you have out there belong to this category they all sacrifice doves backstage they all engage in satanic behavior they all belong to a cult and all of them are promoting immorality may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us their names are not fit to be mentioned in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we know who they are and if you take a look at the way they clothe themselves they are sucking in our children and they are sucking in some of us in an unbelievable way and we still want to listen to all that music and play it in our cars not realizing this is with the assistance of Iblis himself and he is controlling our minds and we appease ourselves by saying the lyrics are good Na'udhu Billah Allah safeguard us those lyrics for your information are becoming dirtier and filthier and more satanic as days pass and we are still allowing it to go through our ears so imagine what will go through the ears of our children and they will say dad you're living in the 60s may Allah safeguard us it's something to be worried about to be concerned we are in the month of Ramadan we read Surah Al-Kahf but sometimes we achieve nothing out of it because we don't even know what we are meant to be achieving out of it now let's go back to the Surah the first story mentioned in the Surah there are four stories in Surah Al-Kahf First one mentioned is the people of the cave. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make mention of that story? They were tested with their religion and they did not give it up. They left community and society and they went away for 309 years. They were out locked and sealed in a cave as though they were bushmen or stone men or whatever you'd like to call them. But their religion was saved. They made a dua to Allah. Oh Allah, grant us savior, protect us from this negative environment from these people who are trying to take our religion away from us they were saved so if we are to learn a lesson from surah al-kahf we should learn a lesson that 
when it comes to protection of our religion, we should leave no stone unturned. Even if it means leaving and abandoning the place we are living in because we are being affected negatively and someone wants to take our religion away. We can go. No problem. Don't compromise that. That is what we learn from Surah Al-Kahf. The second story mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf, very interestingly, the story of the two men, the man who had gar gardens and he had lots of wealth. And what did he say? We read the meaning of Surah Al-Kahf. It says, he said, all this I have been granted because of my own capacity, my brain. I worked hard and it's not going to be depleted, not at all. So two main things. He related all the wealth he had to himself. That's a mistake. And secondly, he said, this is not going to be depleted. It's going to last forever. I don't think this is ever going to be depleted. Not at all. And I don't think that there is something known as the hour. How can there be an hour where things are going to come to an end when I'm enjoying so much here. I've got so much wealth and I've got this and that. And Allahu Akbar, he was given some guidance. That guidance is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf that, hey, look, for you it's best to say that this is not because of my brain, my capacity. Allah has blessed me. He has guided me in a certain direction. He has allowed me to earn all this. So these earnings are actually from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's got nothing to do with me. I put in a small effort and Allah is the one who provided that is what we learn from Surah Al-Kahf. When it comes to wealth, that wealth is not mine or yours. It is Allah's. He owns it. Al-Malu Malullah. The wealth is the wealth of Allah, not mine or yours. We are only custodians of it. How much are we going to use? We are not going to be able to use more than a certain amount. It doesn't mean if you have a lot of wealth, you can now eat 10 times a day. You know, that you, you, you have... The early breakfast, or the very early breakfast, the early breakfast, the breakfast, the late breakfast, the very late breakfast. Then the very early lunch, the, the, the early lunch, the lunch, the late lunch, the very late lunch. Just because you've got well, you become sick. No matter who you are, three is normally a maximum. Three good meals a day is normally a maximum. If you've had a good meal, one is enough. And if you want to have really good meals, the maximum is three. I don't know of anyone who can actually, unless they are not... Absolutely normal. May Allah grant us, inshallah, normal health. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant shifa and cure to all those who are not well. I don't think they could eat more than three times proper meals. But they might have wealth. If we build homes, how many houses are we going to live in? So this is what we need to realize. The wealth, Allah has made you a custodian of it. Just to see what do you do with this. You need X amount. What are you going to do with the rest of it? Your family members come first. Your relatives, those who cannot afford, even those who can afford, you'd like to make life a little bit easier for them. And thereafter, look around you, see the poor believers, so on. Then look at humanity at large and try and assist even the non-Muslims and so on. It's not wrong at all. In fact, it is encouraged. Really, there are people out there, we share with them something in common, and that is humanity. They are human beings. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ goes even further. He says, after that, we need to consider even the animals. There is a reward in quenching the thirst of anything that has a liver. So the wealth and the test of wealth is made mention of in Surah Al-Kahf in a very beautiful way in story form. That Allah says, there was a man, this is what he did. He has blessed a lot of gardens. He thought that this is from myself. And he also thought it's going to last forever. And I am not going to go. And Allah says, that is wrong. A man told him, you're not supposed to have made that statement. No. And he had to rectify that statement of his by saying, no, this is definitely from Allah. Lakinnahu Allahu Rabbi. It is indeed Allah who is my Rabb. Fa'asa Rabbi an yu'tiyani khayram min jannatik. The other man says, it, I am hoping from my Lord to give me that which is better than your gardens that you have here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. So it is up to Allah. He can do what He wants. He can take away what He's given us or He can give us what He has not yet given us. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors of our goodness. The third test that is made mention of very interestingly is the story regarding the test of knowledge where Musa alayhi salam was asked a question. 
who is the most knowledgeable being a nabi of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said yes i have the most knowledge he did not say it in a way to deny that allah is the owner of knowledge and can bestow it upon anyone but he felt allah's bestowed it on me i'm a nabi and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to rectify that correct it fine tune it slightly so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we want to show you someone who has more knowledge than you not on a wholesome level but certain categories of knowledge we've granted him more like what happens with us you have someone asks you who's the most knowledgeable and you say that man that's only in one field but in another field there's another man and in the third field there is another man you have in the field of medicine there might be a top doctor but he might only be top in cardiology whereas you have a pediatrician who's an extremely brilliant doctor and he might be the best in that department so even in one field there are separate departments and Allah wanted to show subhanahu wa ta'ala that to Musa alayhi salam when it comes to the issue of knowledge we should realize what is right is right even if the whole world believes it's wrong it's correct when Islam has prohibited alcohol and intoxicants it will be prohibited even if the world is saying no it's okay when Islam and Allah has prohibited homosexuality, it will be prohibited even if the whole world believes that no, there's nothing wrong with it. It will be wrong. We should never ever allow that knowledge of ours to be contaminated. We need pristine, pure knowledge. So the story is made mention of how Musa alayhi salam met Al-Khidr. And when he met Al-Khidr, certain things happened. I'm sure we must have heard those verses in Taraweeh. And we will still be hearing them this evening, part of those verses, inshallah. And I think we, we are moving in sync throughout Cape Town, inshallah, when it comes to the taraweeh. So, the lesson we learn from that is, always search for knowledge. Never think that I've arrived now, I know the most, and I'm it, that's it. No, search for knowledge, and over and above that, make sure it is pure, pristine, uncontaminated knowledge and hunt for it and ask and keep on asking until you are satisfied of the source of the knowledge that this is now from Allah we must never be satisfied with the level of knowledge we have never we've heard so many times knowledge is an ocean that has no coast so if we have sat at a coast what we have is something that is not knowledge then we have the fourth test that is made mention of in the same surah the test of power Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Dhul Qarnayn in surah Al-Kahf and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how powerful he was but he was a person who did not abuse that power not at all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we gave him authority and we told him قُلْنَا يَا ذَا الْقَرْنَيْنِ إِمَّا أَن تُعَذِّبْ وَإِمَّا أَن تَتَّخِذَ فِيهِمْ حُسْنًا Listen to the power of this verse. The power of it. Allah says, we told Dhul Qarnayn after giving him so much power. We told him, Dhul Qarnayn, you now have the power. Do what you want. You can either punish people, you can either let them loose, you can either be good to them, you can, you can do what you want. You have the power. Because he feared Allah. What happened? He says, قَالَ أَمَّا مَنْ ظَلَمَ فَسَوْفَ نُعَذِّبُهُ ثُمَّ يُرَدُّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ فَيُعَذِّبُهُ عَذَابًا نُكْرًا وَأَمَّا مَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلَهُ جَزَاءً الْحُسْنَى وَسَنَقُولُ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِنَا يُسْرًا Power, power of the verse. Allah says, Dhul Qarnayn, he knew that he could do whatever he wanted, but he had the fear of Allah. So he says, Oh Allah, as for those who have oppressed and done wrong, we will ensure that justice prevails to the degree that we will punish the one who deserves to be penalized. We will punish those who deserve to be penalized. And when they get to you, you can then punish them or you can then decide to forgive them or you can do whatever you want ya Allah but we will try our best to uphold justice and to penalize those who deserve punishment 
And as for those who believe and do good deeds, there are so many of them. And we will never be able to recompense them as a leader. I will not be able to recompense those who do good. So the minimum, we will try our best to utter a good word to them so that at least they feel acknowledged and they know that they have done correct. But you will then reward them, Ya Allah, according to your own measures. Now look at the statement of a just ruler. From this we learn, and there are many more examples, I've just cut it down short to fit into the, the minutes that we do have. From this we definitely learn that Dhul Qarnayn and his example is for us, that whenever Allah has given you power, you might be able to do what you want. You can punish. You know you have a maid working for you, for example, or anybody working for you. Sometimes you can hire and fire as you wish. But you remember one thing, when you have been given power, you will only achieve righteousness when you've protected yourself from that, that jal force which makes you feel that you can do what you wish. You will only do what Allah wishes. We fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want the savior from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that if we have been given power on land, Allah is even more powerful than us. Now when we read this surah, surah al-Kahf, and we see all four angles and aspects, and we see that when it comes to the test of religion, we should not shake. And when it comes to the test of wealth, we relate it to Allah, and we should not seek it from anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when it comes to the test of knowledge, we should ensure that we seek pristine, pure knowledge and that it is not contaminated. We don't allow the media houses to con us with their stories about our own brethren, no matter where they are on the globe. And fourthly, whenever we've been given authority on land, we should remember, fear Allah regarding that authority. Use your days in that position in such a way that when you lose that position, people will miss you and people will say, Subhanallah, there was a man he did the most in his reign and he did the most when he was sitting at the top and he uh, we achieved the most when he was there we don't want to be people whom as you see on the globe today the minute they get a bit of power their pockets become so big that they extend from the waist all the way to the ankles allah safeguard us which means all they're interested in is yes brother and as they uh, as they're talking to you they're filling their pockets and yes brother okay we'll do something about that and they're filling their pockets because they know we're sitting on position if this is going to go we're not going to have another opportunity to fill our pockets rather fill them now allahu akbar allahu akbar like they say there was a man <laughs> this is on a lighter note he always wanted to be an assistant an assistant assistant of the leader why they say no it's better to be the assistant the assistant they never understood why he says, what I did, I made a hole at the bottom of his pocket and I walked behind him, mashallah. <laughs> so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors, to grant us goodness. Really, now we should be reading the surah with its meaning, with understanding and with consciousness as to why is it that there are some narrations that have been reported by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa where he says, whoever reads it correctly, understanding it, knowing it, believing it with conviction, it will protect them from the trials and tribulations associated with the Dajjal. And it will protect them from the Dajjal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our offspring. And may he make this a means of our closeness to the Quran. The reason I chose this subject straight from the Quran is because we are in the month of the Quran. The month of Ramadan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala